Hi, welcome to Nuclear Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about common radioactive emissions. Specifically, we're going to be talking about common forms of radiation, and we're going to be referring to table O of your reference table, alpha particles, beta particles, positron particles, and finally, gamma radiation. Let's talk about some common forms of radiation. And this is coming off of table O of your reference table. The thing that we want to look at here is the difference in mass, charge, and the symbols used among the particles. So we're going to be talking about alpha particles today. And an alpha particle can be represented as either HE, helium, and we'll talk about that later, or an alpha symbol. We're also going to talk about beta particles. And a beta particle is basically an electron, so we're going to see it represented as an E or the beta symbol. Then we're going to talk about gamma radiation, which is going to be represented by the gamma symbol that we see right here. In the past, we've talked about neutrons and protons, and finally, positrons, which looks very similar to a beta particle. The key thing here to remember is that you have table O to use, so make sure that you use it. Let's talk about alpha particles. An alpha particle is a helium nucleus composed of two protons and two neutrons. It's going to have an overall positive charge of plus two because the nucleus is only considered, that's the only thing that we're going to look at, just the nucleus. An alpha particle is represented by the symbols HE because it is a helium nucleus and by the alpha symbol. Alpha particles have very low penetrating power because it's a large particle at the atomic level. So in this visual down here, we can see that this helium nucleus, remember nuclei are only made of protons and neutrons. We're gonna have two protons that are positively charged and two neutrons which are neutral. So the overall charge on that nucleus is positive. Now let's talk about beta particles. A beta particle is a high energy electron that is released when a neutron changes into a proton and an electron. Now I know this sounds very, very strange, but in the nucleus, some of those particles have the ability to change. So when a beta particle is emitted, that means a neutron, which we know is neutral, is going to lose an electron. And if it loses that electron, it's going to result in the formation of a proton. And we'll talk about this more when we actually write out nuclear expressions. A beta particle can either be represented by the beta symbol or as an E for an electron. The key things to notice here, when a nucleus gives off a beta particle, the mass number does not change. We can see that by these little zeros up here. So the mass number is not going to change but the atomic number is going to increase by one. And again, when we get to writing these expressions, you'll see what I mean. Has about 100 times more penetrating power than alpha radiation. So this is a stronger type of radiation. It's able to penetrate one to two millimeters into solid material, able to pass through clothing and damaged skin. Now let's talk about positron particles. A positron is identical to a beta particle but it's going to have an overall positive charge. Just like a beta particle, we're going to represent this with a beta symbol or an E. When a nucleus gives off a positron particle, the mass number again is not going to change. We can see that by the zeros up here, but the atomic number is going to decrease by one. And again, we'll see that in the future as we write out these nuclear expressions. The penetrating power for a positron particle is very similar to that of a beta particle. Gamma radiation, high energy rays that are released for most nuclear decay reactions. The symbol here is a gamma, which a gamma when drawn, it looks like this. It's gonna have more penetrating power or higher energy than alpha or beta radiation. It's able to penetrate deep into solid material and is stopped only by heavy shielding, like by using concrete or lead. So you'll notice here that when gamma radiation is released, the mass number does not change and the atomic number does not change. And again, I'll show you what that looks like in the future. So here we have an overall comparison of penetration power. Alpha particles only have a small penetrating power. Beta particles have more of a penetrating power and gamma radiation has the most penetrating power. Now let's talk about separation of radioactive emissions. 
So let's say we have a radioactive source. And when that radioactive source is released, that radiation goes in this direction and is attracted to this negatively charged plate. In a situation where that occurs, that means that that type of radioactive emission must have an overall positive charge because we know opposites attract. So we could classify this type of emission as either positron emission or an alpha particle. What if we had a radioactive source that came out and was attracted to my positive plate over here? If it's attracted to the positive plate, that means it's going to have an overall negative charge associated with it. So most likely that is beta particles that are being released. If the radioactive source releases radiation that is not attracted to the positive or the negative plates, that means it has no charge associated with it which in that case, that means it must be gamma radiation. And that's a quick overview of how to classify radiation by looking at is it attracted to a positive plate, a negative plate, or neither. So what did you learn? We talked about common forms of radiation by looking at table O. We talked about alpha particles, beta particles, positron particles, and finally learned a little bit about gamma radiation. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.